What's up everybody, it's Man of Low Moral Fiber here. My name's Luke, and in this video I'm going to be attempting to answer the question, what is the most underrated weapon in the game? Recently I answered the opposite, and chose the Florentine as the most overrated weapon in the game. Now obviously these are very subjective questions, and different people may have different answers for them. If you're interested in seeing a different perspective on this question, what is the most underrated weapon in the game, please check out my friend Dirch's channel who you should be seeing an annotation for now, and it is also linked in the description of this video. Now my particular pick is a shotgun, and it is the Sledge's shotgun in particular. Now I always see different shotguns recommended when people ask, like the uh, Interfacer, Conference Call, Twister, Omen, Blockhead, and you know Quad, Ravager, and way more. But I never really see the Sledge's shotgun mentioned, and I think that's kind of weird. I'm not saying the Sledge's shotgun is the most powerful weapon in the game, or among that tier or whatever. However, I do find it to be a pretty damn powerful shotgun that can be used very effectively. So I'm going to be using it here with a Legendary Killer class mod, and I'm going to be going, I guess, to the Southpaw Steam and Power map to evaluate the performance of the weapon and try to defend my claim as to uh, why this weapon is underrated. So we'll head there now and we'll see how it performs. I am going to make sure that I have on the right gear here, so that's good. I am using a Legendary Killer class mod, and uh, the skill build I'm using looks like such. I am going to have good one shot one kill power with the weapon between deception ambush and one shot one kill. And then killer and um, precision will help me reload a lot faster and tighten up the spread. So we should be able to use this weapon effectively. We'll see if that is the case. So we're coming here now and uh, we'll see how we do. Like I said, please be sure to check out Dirch's channel. He produces high quality content and uh, he also does Borderlands the pre-sequel and other games. And, uh, you know, some people have asked me to do Borderlands the pre-sequel, and I don't really do that game, but he does. And so if you want to see some of that content, you can head over there. He also does a good series called uh, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly of Red Text Weapons. And uh, it really gives you an idea of what each modifier does and how each weapon is different from its non-unique counterpart. So you can see right now that uh, the Sledge's Shotgun is tearing these guys up pretty well, even though I don't have the one-shot, one-kill bonus active. Well, I missed that shot because he decided to duck a little too far there. But, um, you can see there that I killed that guy in one shot, and that guy in one shot, and I wasn't even scoped in, that was just hip fire. So that's pretty good. This guy sounds like he might have, um, some damage over time, I don't know exactly. Um, let's make sure he's slagged. And then, um, we're gonna try to hit him. Looks like we killed him there. So that's quite, uh, that's kind of a long range for a shotgun, you know? This shotgun works as a medium range weapon, which not every shotgun does. And so that's one of the things it definitely has going for it. Now, I'm going to uh, definitely try to get the one shot, one kill on Assassin Watt here. And that worked out well. We'll avoid these axes and uh, get some extra damage on this guy. And then as we reloaded, it uh, definitely had him staggered or stunned a little bit. And so... That worked out for us. We're going to blow up this barrel, and then we're going to blow up that one over there just to protect ourselves from that. And we'll enter the second room here. This is where we'll be fighting Assassin 1E. This is kind of interesting for me because I'm currently in the middle of my level 1 to overpower level 8 zero playthrough, and, uh, you know, I've been fighting the Assassins quite a bit. So um, you can see here that it's wrecking multiple enemies at once. You need to be at kind of close range. But obviously, Zero has ways to close the gaps, and uh, so do other characters as well. So, that's a good thing. We'll let the uh, Exploder do his thing. He didn't want to do his thing, so uh, we killed him. And we'll let these guys run at me now, and we'll kill them. Ironclad's nice and dead, or at least he's close enough that I can kill him like this. Man. Okay, so we're going to kill this Ironclad this time. Uh, as part of a boar here or something, I don't know. Alright, he's dead. And then we got the little runner dead as well. So, so far we're not really having trouble. Uh, these guys have backed us up a little bit. But, uh, we're doing pretty well. That guy's running away. Try to hit his head through this guy. It might have worked. I don't think it did. Um, sometimes I try to go for that with more accurate weapons as a bore through somebody, especially since, uh, the skill bore highlights critical hits and you can see them, you know, through the shadows or whatever. Through the blue, at least. So here I'm gonna execute this dude, which will, uh, move him back a little, move him back a little bit, but then his grenade blew up there and it threw me off right before I took my shot, so, uh, that ended up not being as cool as I thought it was going to be <laughs> by a long, by a long shot. Okay, um, so there's one more guy here. 
We'll get ready to kill him. And now there will be um, Assassin 1E and all of his bodyguards spawning. We're a little bit low on sniper ammo, or shotgun ammo, excuse me, but not too bad. All right. Cool. And so it definitely has enough stopping power to kill these running lunatics. And that's a good thing because these guys really can't get that close to you. Otherwise, um, they'll kill you. And so uh, we're definitely watching for where their grenades fall and everything. Looks like there's still uh, some more coming. So we may need to uh, kind of take a circuitous route here or something um, in order to avoid Assassin 1E. Or we can uh, let this guy blow up on Assassin 1E and then try to get a uh, good critical hit on him there. And that seemed to work out. So the fire rate that this weapon can achieve through uh, burst fire is pretty damn high. It does have a weird uh, little burst charge delay, or burst fire delay, excuse me, but um, that's all right. It does pretty damn well. With Killer, the reload speed is mitigated significantly. That is one of the drawbacks of the weapon, is the extended reload speed. Um, all Bandit shotguns share that, so, um, you know, that's something to keep in mind at least. We'll run over these guys because they probably dropped a little bit of shotgun ammo for us, and it looks like they did. We did make it up to maximum shotgun ammo. Shotguns have a little bit lower ammo capacity than, say, pistols, SMGs, or assault rifles. They're not as bad as uh, snipers or rocket launchers, obviously, though. Okay. So we're going to come over here and uh, get whatever's coming around the corner slagged, and we did. We can spread kunai on both of them. We'll kill one with this uh, second burst, and then we'll kill the next one with the third burst, because I missed the first burst there. That said, you can use this weapon very effectively as a close quarters shotgun. Um, you can spread your shots out, and you get uh, you know several bursts per magazine and everything, so it really does work out. Hopefully that one goes there and blows up those barrels. And does some damage to those guys. So that worked out, I think. So that works out, too. So now we got uh, an ultimate badass nomad here. Which is a little bit worrying, because uh, you have to hit him in the head, right? But we killed him. Okay. Neat. So we've been luring the enemies into close quarters there for a bit. And uh, that was working out very well for us. All right, we'll use the rest of this uh, deception that I used to get away from the exploder to kill that guy. So dual purpose deception there, that works out. So even at range here, I mean, it's going to take that guy out. So that worked out well. And granted, that wasn't a ton of range, but it was range nonetheless. Okay. I'll reload here to get that one shot one kill bonus then I'll load him up with kunai and we'll take him out so that worked out well you can see how this weapon is not lacking in stopping power if you do hit it um, correctly you know you need to get those critical hits and everything but that is to be expected this is OP8 and like I said I never really see this recommend uh, weapon recommended for anything much less OP8 and it does fine I mean it's a viable weapon here Did a little bit better against that ironclad than we did pre uh, previously. So that is evidence that our troubles with the first one were due to my human error as opposed to the weapons transgressions. Wow, it's weird to get two uh, big badasses in this room, but an excellent opportunity to showcase this weapon, I guess. And you can see there, it's very effective. Okay. So one more here for us, and uh, then it will be time for Assassin Wreath, who is a little bit scary. And we might put on a uh, Shockbone of the Ancient for him, because Wreath is, uh, he's a bad guy. So um, for whatever reason, I don't appear to have a Shockbone of the Ancients. Ugh, that is my bad. We'll kill him without it. So this isn't the weapon I would bring to uh, Digistruct Peak to fight the assassins, perhaps. But I think it will be uh, more than good enough for fighting them one-on-one -on -one here in uh, Southpaw Steam and Power. Which is a difficult map, mind you. Okay, so uh, now I got fire damage coming out the ass. Hopefully we can survive it here. 
He's a hard enemy. That is for certain. Alright. Now, though, he is a dead enemy. Perfect. So that worked out. And now uh, we'll flank this guy and kill him. Keep in mind, if I would have actually been smart in preparation and brought a uh, Shockbone of the Ancients, it would have been a lot easier to kill Wreath. That said, we killed him nonetheless. So, um, pick that up for sniper ammo just to make sure that uh, we're doing well on that because we're about to go into a room where I am going to try to fill up my shotgun ammo capacity um, so that we can make it through the next room, which will include Roof, who is a very dangerous enemy and perhaps the hardest part of this particular run. So we'll head that way now and we'll see how we do. I'm gonna grab all that ammo and we did that, so now we're moving forward and we'll see what uh, lies ahead for us. I'm gonna try to get close to these guys and uh, go for a uh, double kill here. So that was kind of lame for me because I walked through those barrels that I tried to destroy. Um, I didn't really mean to do that by any means. So uh, that sucked, but now we're doing okay. And uh, now I have an opportunity to retreat. We've killed two of the uh, exploding ones, so that's a good thing. We'll go ahead and kill that one too because he applied a fire dot to us. And uh, we'll kill this one the same as we killed the last one. Okay. Now there's a guy up here. He's trying to uh, exacerbate our fire damage over time with sh uh, slag, but we killed him. So that's good. All right. So, you can see that as we get critical hits with this weapon, it has plenty of stopping power. Now we're going to be taking out some more gun enemies, so we'll need to uh, kind of pick and choose um, what we're going to take out and win. In this case, I just took out what was available. We'll kill that guy. Plenty of stopping power, obviously, to kill him, so that's good. Then I'm going to charge at this guy and kill him. That way I still have deception for uh, that guy there, and then we can kill him. Perfect. So just a couple more enemies here. Looks to be uh, one Nomad and one Marauder. We've dealt with worse. So like I said, it's not the world's most powerful weapon by any means, but it is a viable one at that, so um, that's good. We'll go down there and uh, figure out how we're going to kill this fella. He's just down here. Being a bitch, running away, catching us on fire, um, which I do hate. Thank you, Barrels. Oh, good. He is really running away. Um, yeah, so we killed him. Now we'll be working on Assassin, uh, Assassin Roof, who's so fun. Been having trouble with this guy recently in Digistruct Peak, so uh, we'll try to teach him a lesson here now that I actually have OP8 gear. <laughs> figured I'd have enough burst damage to, uh, or bore damage just to kill those guys, so I did. This guy is pretty damn aggressive. He'll make jumps. He'll, uh, try to get places where you don't think he'll be, and he'll jump at you, too. He's, uh, aggressive. He throws grenades. He has, sometimes, a very powerful shotgun. At this point in time, he seems to have a decently powerful shotgun, so we have to respect his, and hopefully we can, uh, teach him to respect ours. Okay, so like I said, he is damn difficult, and my antagonist has just managed to slag me, which is always fun. Okay. So my slag's almost worn off. His did, so I re-upped on that. So, um, yeah, that worked out. We uh, <laughs> did major damage, but we took major damage. That said, we were able to get away, and we got our transfusions back to us. So we should be able to kill him this deception. We'll see if that's the case. Or at least before the next deception cycle. Excellent. It came down to the wire there, but we got him before he got us. So um, I'd, I'd count that as a win. Got a little bit hairy. Like I said, this isn't the world's most powerful weapon, but it is a powerful weapon. One that I don't feel gets enough recognition. I mean, it's a pretty damn good gun, right? Um, it seemed to perform well there. I could take it to Washburn Refinery and 
I guess perhaps I might because uh, I think the weapon deserves to be shown against loaders as well because it shines more against loaders than it does against humanoid enemies. And so we'll just pop on over there real quick and see how that goes for us. Um, let me find it really quick. Here it is. Okay, and so now that we have spawned in here to the Washburn Refinery, it's a good opportunity for me to uh, re-up on ammunition. And I guess in this particular uh, run, I can talk about how it synergizes with some of Zero's skills. Now, um, it works well with other characters as well. Um, in particular, I am reviewing it for, uh, from a Zero perspective. He is my favorite. Um, so, obviously, precision and velocity are helping me use this weapon a little bit at range. And so you can see it's not super effective at range, but it is still effective, which is nice because you can't always get right up next to your enemies. When you can, though... Um, the weapon has incredible bore potential because it just puts out so many pellets so very quickly. But to be able to finish that guy off at that range with the shotgun is pretty nice. It can save you from having to switch weapons, um, or go into a pause menu, or, you know, just save you because you don't have a weapon that might be suitable at that range currently equipped. And so that works out well. Beyond that, Zero's killer skill works out really well for mitigating this, uh, weapon's huge reload. If you're not, uh, currently... On kill skill time though that is you have your kill skills active and you don't uh, or you don't have your kill skills active and uh, you don't have killer ready um, deception still provides an opportunity for you to reload the weapon which is nice when enemies present their critical hits to you it's pretty easy to kill so this one he needs shock damage so we'll use shock on him and then we'll switch on over to the corrosive one and we'll finish him off Use this opportunity to reload with the killer bonus, and you can see when I have that killer bonus, it totally gets rid of the major drawback of the uh, um, Sledge's shotgun, which is that longer reload time. That said, I mean, it still kills fast, and so if you can get a kill with it, then you can reload quick with it. Now... Um, I did use a significant amount of ammo in this first room. I got down to 74 there, but you can see that when I am low on shotgun ammo in specific, the game is going to wait shotgun drops for me. Let's go ahead and take a look at killing this guy, um, who is going to be a super badass loader, and hopefully we'll be able to get the one shot one kill on him. So we throw that over there, and then, um, we have the gun reloaded, and you can see there that it was enough to kill him. Unfortunately, because of the lag caused by the safe station, it didn't look as spectacular as it could have, but you can see it took him out pretty easily. All right, so I'm going to open these up. Definitely need, um, or don't need to, but definitely prudent to um, get the ammo available to you before you proceed. And we'll probably take out uh, all the way to the Hyperius room, and maybe Pervy too, why not? Just so that you guys can see um, against loaders, this thing absolutely wrecks. And I think it should be pretty easy to get that point. I mean, if you don't kill them, you're going to disable them because you're hitting their critical hits very easily. In fact, all shotguns do perform a little bit better traditionally against uh, loader enemies than they do against humanoid enemies because the spread pattern is likely to hit with more of its pellets against loaders because they have more spots to hit. Um, so that's pretty cool. Let's see how it does against these guys here. Ooh, that wasn't good. I got stuck on that barrel. That could have been real bad, actually. Looks like I killed that guy, though, so that's good. I'm going to use this guy to recover some health. Now I'll kill him. And you can see we uh, staggered that guy, and now he's dead. Disabled that guy, and he's dead. And killed him. So it works through the exploders pretty quickly. That's something that I would say is a desirable quality in a shotgun. You know, um, the ability to take out the charging, exploding enemies very, very easily. All right. So we'll slag and then uh, proceed to kill this particular loader, and it's dead. And as you can see, this weapon, I mean, like I said, it's not the most powerful, but it's powerful enough, especially um, since this is OP8 and stuff. I mean, it does well. Ooh, so um, like I said, this weapon is fairly ammo hungry. I mean, it does eat up eight ammo at a time, it seems, in a burst, um, depending on how active Two Fang was, that particular burst and stuff. So that's good that we were able to get more ammo there. 
So we'll open this one, and that should provide enough ammo to not only kill this guy, but the badass who just spawned as well. And then some of the enemies that we killed while we were low on ammo will probably have dropped ammo for us. So we're going to be plenty good to go into the next room. Yeah, like I said, now we have over uh, 70 ammo, so good stuff. Try to get another one-shot, one-kill on this enemy like we did the last one. And we did. At the very least, it was a one-burst, one-kill, but it seemed to be the uh, first set of pellets that killed him. So that's pretty good. Now we're doing fine on ammo. I probably should have been walking around and picking up the stuff there. Probably my fault, player error, that we run out of, ran out of ammo there. Um, but, you know, um, it is something to keep in mind. Ooh, uh, extra badass loader. That's a little bit of a bonus for us. So we'll go ahead and uh, kill him. Same way we just killed the last one. Didn't quite get uh, the one-shot, one-kill, but we got close. Neat. So we'll slag this little fella. And uh, someone, through all the visual pollution, was uh, dealing some good damage to me. So we'll uh, put some transfusions out there and recover that damage. That'll reload for us now that we have killer. Um, obviously, you know, one shot, one kill is working out great in situations like that. Ambush always works with uh, deception active. So that works out really well for us. And uh, the rest of these guys, I mean, they don't really stand a chance against it, you know? It is very, very powerful. And in close quarters, it's a great shotgun. In medium range, it's an above average shotgun. So I like that. Wow, apparently that didn't slag it for us. That's okay. We're going to scoot on over to this guy and uh, try to get an end of deception shot on him that was at least effective enough to do something. All right. So, I want to uh, kill an enemy without catching another fire damage over time. Well, instead I just took a huge uh, blast to the face there. Um, no innuendos intended. Moxie would be all over that one, though. Um, so, we're going to move forward here, and as you can see, we've definitely worked through all of these enemies. Now, like I said, my friend Dirch had a completely different answer for this. An entirely different weapon class, in fact. I don't want to spoil it for you guys, but like I said, it was linked earlier in the video. I'll leave it linked in the description for you guys, and, uh, I definitely recommend checking it out. Like I said, he has a ton of great content, and he's made a completely different pick than me. So if you thought what my pick for uh, most underrated weapon in the game was interesting, you might find his pick interesting as well. We've got just a few more enemies to take out here. We're going to go to the uh, pervy section and kill those four-player health scaled. You can see that we were already in four-player health scaling by the way I picked up that last box of ammunition. So that's important to note. But you can see that we're still perfectly capable of getting easy kills on these guys. So, um, I'm just going to stock up on ammo real quick, and then we'll go ahead and face these guys. Okay. Let's see what we have here. Obviously, we have Pervy. Don't want to take that shock dot. Um, and there should be one more loader as well. Okay. So, uh, four-player health scaling... Dealing quite a bit of damage to my health here, but that's okay. Because we can get one shot, one kills on them, which is pretty impressive. This is the guy I was trying to slag, though, so that we could hopefully get some boar action. That didn't quite work out for me, but um, other than that, it is working out. Ah, he got unslagged, so that sucked. We'll re-slag these guys. Obviously, in four-player mode, slag wears off very, very quickly. And, uh, you know, that can be a huge problem for us. Without one shot, one kill, though, we still killed uh, Pervy in one burst, which is pretty damn in impressive, I would say. He has boss-level boss health. Excuse my uh, Mike Tyson lisp there. That was my bad. Okay. Awesome. So, let's uh, find and slag this guy. And then we'll go forward. Kunai him up and get that kill. So you can see, the Sledge's shotgun is a damn effective weapon. Like I said, not the best weapon in the world, but a damn effective one, and one that I never see get any love. And that's why it's my pick for 
most underrated weapon in the game? Go ahead and tell me your pick for that. Obviously, it's a subjective question. I'd like to see how others evaluate that particular question as well. So as always, guys, thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. If you haven't yet taken the time to subscribe, please do so. I'd appreciate that as well. Otherwise, I do hope to catch you next time. Bye, guys.